This is Kurt Heisinger, accounting professor at Sierra College and author of Managerial Accounting. This video describes the components of a production cost report in a process costing environment. The, uh, looking at the first bullet point here, the production cost report summarizes all the production cost activity within a processing or production department, we can call it either, for reporting period. And in prior videos, we talked about the idea of having an assembly production department and a finishing production department. So we would have this cost report for each of those departments. Uh, and as I mentioned, a separate report is prepared for each department. If we had two departments, as I just described, or four or five or ten, we would look at this report for each processing or production department. Uh, to, to get the details, this is the last bullet point here, of where all the information comes from, that's in a separate video, and it's called Process Costing Weighted Average Method. So be sure to look at that video if you want to see all the details of where these numbers come from. On the next slide, we're going to look at the production cost report, assuming that you've already looked at that video and know where the numbers come from. So this is really more about the presentation of the production cost report and how it is going to be used by management to assess the costs within each production department. What does the production cost report look like? Well, that's what we have here. We have the production cost report for one department. It is the assembly department. I know it's, it's a fine print here. I'll expand it in just a minute so you can see the details. But this is for the assembly department, and it's for the month ended May 31. And this ties in, as I mentioned before, to a previous video. So be sure to look at that video to see where these numbers come from. This production cost report has four different sections, and those four sections align with the four steps that go along with process costing. So here is the first section. It ends right here. Uh, it starts up at the top, but ends right there. And uh, that's step uh, one. I'll, we'll get into the details of that just in just a second, so you get a better look at it. And then step two is the second section. Step three is the third section. And then you'll see at the very bottom here, that's step four. That's the fourth part of the production cost report. So if you look at this, let's zoom in a little bit so you get a chance to see what the uh, information is being provided here. If you look at step one right here, this, in, this shows us the summary of the physical units and uh, equivalent unit calculations. Again, I'm not going to go through the calculations. That's all been done in a, in a separate video, but this is where we show that information. So the information includes the physical units that were completed and transferred out and that are in ending work and process inventory, and then it shows those physical units being converted to equivalent units for direct materials, for direct labor, and for overhead. So that's where we'll see those equivalent unit calculations and the resulting information. Then we take a look at the uh, second part of this. So I'm going to come back out and then move it up a little bit so you can see it. The second section of this, step two, is the summary of the costs to be accounted for. So that's this section here, and you'll see that description right there. Summary of costs to be accounted for. And uh, we have costs for our direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, and then in total as well. Then the third section that you see here is the calculation of the cost per equivalent unit. So that comes from the very first section where you'll find the equivalent unit information, and uh, that's the second part here. And then the first line comes from step two above, the costs to be accounted for. So not to get too crazy with the roadmap here, but there's that 210. And uh, then if you look up here at direct material equivalent units, there's the 7,000. And so that's where that information comes from. Take 210,000 divided by 7,000, that's $30 per equivalent unit. So that's step three of the production cost report. And then at the very bottom here, you'll find step four, where we take this cost per equivalent unit and apply it to the units that have been transferred out and the units that are still in ending work and process inventory. So these are the four steps of the uh, process costing process that are reflected in the production cost report. And I've zoomed back out so you can see the, the whole report. And here is step four. So step one, two, three, and four are all summarized in the production cost report. It's important to talk about how managers use the production cost report information 
If they don't use the information, then there's really no need to put it together. So how do managers use this information? Uh, well, first of all, they use it for decision-making purposes, and uh, some of the questions that they might be addressing are shown here. These are just some examples. For example, a manager might ask, how much does it cost to produce each unit of product within a certain department, or maybe for all production departments combined? And we can get that information from the production cost report. Also, a manager might ask, what price should we charge our customers? Over time, we want to charge our customers a price that's higher than the cost of the goods and, and probably have some kind of a standard margin we'd like to add on to the cost of the product. And it depends on the industry. But that cost information is useful in determining what price we should charge our customers. Uh, also, managers will take a look at the components of our production cost, direct materials, direct labor, or overhead, to, to see what's going on there and to see what the trends look like from one month to the next, up or down, and whether that's something that they would expect. Uh, and it helps managers then to address becoming more efficient in those areas. Uh, and as part of that, where are we having difficulties in the production process? Maybe we identify in a particular production department that our costs are um, higher than we expected, and we'd like to address that and find out why and make some adjustments to take care of that issue. There's one last piece to talk about with regards to the production cost report. It can be misleading if we're not careful. There is uh, unit cost information on the production cost report, and any time we present unit cost information, we want to make sure that, that whoever's using that information understands that that unit cost information is typically only good at a certain level of production. It's, it's very unusual for all production costs to be variable costs, so we don't want to make that assumption. Um, we're going to have some fixed costs in there, and if you haven't learned about fixed costs yet, you, you will be. That's a separate uh, video and a separate chapter, but uh, fixed costs don't change in total as we change production. So uh, if we've got fixed costs, as most production facilities do, then uh, we have to be very careful when we prepare unit cost information to let management know that that's only good within a certain range of, of uh, production activity.